Good morning, folks. We've got a number of key papers to hit today. We've got an updated look at the sunspot cycle forecast, and we've got a special piece at the end. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day was dominated by the coronal holes. The northern polar extension reaching transequatorially is part of the 11-year polar flip cycle of the sun. Solar wind waning now, but will increase from those holes by the weekend. Folks, you might recall this graphic we made about a month ago showing how the CMEs we are seeing off the sun are really nowhere near sunspot maximum level yet. Well, a bit of a similar you are here annotation from Dr. Tony Phillips. While I run spaceweathernews.com, NASA's Dr. Phillips runs spaceweather.com. And indeed, we've got a better data fit after the early sunspot cycle has broken predictions for the last year. The sun should be expected to be a bit stronger this cycle. And to complement that shifted prediction, not to mention the long-standing debate over grand solar minimum, we are predicted here to be now about 10% stronger than last cycle. Dr. Phillips vindicated, Zarkova debunked again, and FYI grand solar minimum is a good candidate for the next solar cycle, but not this one. Up next, we're peeking in on a sun-like star in its teenage years. It's a good indicator for what our sun may have been like eons ago. This baby star, still highly active. Folks, here are a number of pre-seismic studies, all in the electroquake realm. The lithosphere-atmosphere ionosphere coupling model has been working all over the world, and they're starting to realize it works in North America as well, even though you observers already knew that when we used the model to predict the 2019 Cali quake, which is also on the list of confirmations here today, that was our biggest prediction of 2019. Speaking of predictions, yes, the Earth's rotation data is moving again. We're now, for the first time, seeing a predicted fastest day pushed to November, if they wipe this data for the fifth time this year, it'll be in the next two to three days. Lastly, on the article front, we've got yet another look at IMF coupling. Folks, there is one space weather theme the last three years, and that is the recognition that the interplanetary magnetic field, that IMF, is as important as coronal holes and CMEs. And if there is one catastrophism lesson to be learned, it is that we can scale up those connections to learn what the galactic current sheet is doing to the solar system and the sun. Speaking of which, folks, this graphic was used for a deeper look episode recently on our website called Four Paths to the Micronova. It's a very advanced graphic for looking so simple, and veteran observers, test your catastrophism awareness with me here and see if you've got it or you need to review. Starting top left, the galactic astrophysics is demanding the cyclical electromagnetic insult be there. We believe it's the Taurus jet model extending into the galactic current sheet, but the alternate theory that they are galactic spiral shocks would work the same way from our perspective. It's sort of a minutia point on the larger scale galactic physics. But this is where our scalability from space weather interplanetary magnetic field studies to the galactic scale comes in, and indeed, we have seen the nearby stars activating in a line right towards the sun, and we're next. Bottom left, the cyclical event shows up tremendously in Earth cycle data, the excursion cycle, the half cycle Heinrich events every 6,000 years. Earth is due for the next one. We are seeing it unfold now, and not just here in our magnetic field and climate, but throughout the solar system, all the planets and the sun. Bottom right, when we investigate that evidence that come with those cycles, the magnetic excursion, biosphere stress, climate, impactors, volcanoes, the cyclical deluge, and the nova level isotopes, there's only one way to get all those things all together. And that brings us top right, where we specifically look to the astrophysics. And not only is their knowledge of NOVA expanding to include a vastly larger range of events, but they think recent nearby NOVA happened here. But the main issue is that the magnetic dusty pinballs carrying the isotopes don't leave the remnant. They're trapped. And if we're in the remnant of a recent supernova, Earth would be dead. This instead suggests it's the Sun in a smaller, recurrent micronova, the half-cycle 6,000-year event was discovered to be tied to the sun as well. We've seen the solar chemistry begin to change too, and they said that's due to its changing magnetic fields. Folks, this is four different paths to the solar flash and catastrophism, and we didn't even touch the religious, mythology, or plasma lab work done by Anthony Peratt. Feeling a little lost? Right below the video, click the Disaster Cycle playlist. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.